one last thing to add. Um, personally, if somebody had a sampler, I would never listen to it, first of all. Because uh, the, the procedure, how it's going, for a movie, all right, you hear about the book, for a book, for example, you hear about the book, you go and read it, and then you like it, all right, but you've bought it first. For music, now you just download it for free, you listen to it again, 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 and then you like it. And then probably you're going to start supporting the person and go to the gigs or buy something or contribute because you have a relationship now. But if you don't listen to the music, the whole music all the time, so you can like it, you're never going to support. So a sample, I've never been to somebody's gig, you know, because I heard a sample, like, oh, that's a catchy sample, you know, somebody goes to the gig. No, I need to listen to the song all the time, you know, get used to it, get familiarized. This is why music is different from every other industry. So I think it's a very important point we don't need to forget. I also think though, what we were talking about earlier, there's so much information now, and there's so much music, everyone's a musician, you can get mapped now, you, you, can, you can make an album. So, at, at the bottom, you have so much competition, who are you to sell your music? It's like you're no one. So you, have to, you have to give someone value, and music's not necessarily the value, it's, it's the, um, the concept of the album, what, what you're giving, and, and I think giving away the music is for free isn't necessarily, it's, it's not a hindrance, because if you can get one listener, one low fan from, from giving away the music for free, and they're going to be like, Yo, I met Tommy because he, cause he liked my music, and he's now my friend, you know, so what you can gain from, from giving away something for free, Despite the cost, it's, it's way more than you can, can lose. Well, you forgot the last part. People seem to be forgetting the last part of what I said. If you are not a gigging musician or band, even not a gigging musician, for example, you can release music and then and then have have a link to someone else you sell. You know, if you're, I know someone who's a who's a, who's a musician, and he's a painter, and through giving away his music, he's now got a, a painting family. So it's not you don't have to gig. I, okay, I just wanted to, to say one thing. There's in business, uh, someone told me that you need 11 interactions with someone before they actually spend money on you. So I understand that if you're not gigging, that's a harder road because anyone that does gig, we can still sell CDs even if we give it away for free because there's always there will always be people that want to purchase a part of you. But you know, just getting those interactions is really important. However you do it, whether they connect to you as a musician, through music, through your other qualities as a person, you know, you have to kind of showcase not only your music, they need to know who you are today. They, they want to feel close, otherwise Mr. Carter wouldn't have three million, you know, followers and not have need to follow anyone back because people want to be a part of who he is and his life and you know, so I think it's, it's you kind of need to, unfortunately, you need to kind of, you know, look at what you as, a, as an artist as, and as a, as a person, what you contribute to, to your fans. I've, I, to be honest, I've seen, seen people t um, put their toe in the water two ways, you know, so, so Spotify is a superb example where actually the, the artist, and there's been quite a bit of consternation about this this week in the press, where you, you, you get an income back, allegedly, um, of sorts from, from being part of Spotify, some, something stream, streaming your, um, your, your work. So they're listening to it on that, so you do, do get some kind of income. But actually, you know, I'm thinking about, well, I've, I've, I've got a track that's about three, three years old, which, which, which I really like, and um, am I making money out of it now? Well, probably not. Probably not. It's, 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 it's sitting in CDs, physical stuff that I, I, I can't sell through different... If I'm definitely if I'm not gigging, I can't, I can't give it away basically. So actually, giving it away free for my new stuff to come out and people pay for my new stuff is is, is a good business strategy within the, within the new new era in particular. And huge success I've seen, you know, with with that in terms of promoting. Oh, hey, they're still around. You know, the guy who just did that stuff three years ago. Yeah, I've got it. I've just got it free. Just just seen it with a. Um, uh, uh, Norfolk-based uh, artist who's touring all the time, um, free has suddenly become uh, 
something for her that she's suddenly gotten to conscious, wow, um, I, I sell my album for eight, eight uh, pound at gigs because it's physical. People actually will give money for something physical. But hey, I could, I could give three tracks away from it to, to my friends and then point people back to, you know, it made me a pay, paid for download for the rest and pick up my CD at the gigs. So that's her strategy. Very, very good. You know, works. So everything's gone definitely quiet. It's obviously quite late. Um, my last sort of point um, was, was actually run around now. And I just wanted to get your, your views. And we're starting to get your views. You know, great view about streaming. Actually streaming, you've decided where your audience is if you're going to Norway in particular. But actually what you have to do to work out is one, two or three or, or 303. Where, where is your audience? How you connect with them? Um, work out your strategies for that um, in particular, where you, where you put your music um, in particular, who's, who's, who's going to, to hear it if it's on one system or not another system. I just wanted to, to know if anyone's had any ex other, other experience of chucking their music somewhere and going, oh, where's, where's everyone gone? Or, wow, everyone's here. Yeah. And don't full feed like the whole EP. She wants to be trying to be mysterious. I think it can work. I disagree with it. I think you should just give the world your whole EP and then gig. She doesn't even gig at the moment. She just wants to give the world bit by bit. Yeah. But that's her strategy. She thinks it's going to work. So I think there's different strategies for different people, different music. Yeah. You can't say one thing will do it, but um, it's quite difficult to, to find out. But I think testing. Just see what works for you and is different. I, 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 that's, that's, that's one of the golden rules of social media, is actually test, test things out, work out a strategy, connection strategy, content strategy. It's still changing all the time. Mm -hmm. The sand is shifting under our feet. I think, I think the one thing isn't, isn't shifting, though, is, is, is connect, don't broadcast. Yeah. Whatever, whatever network you're on, connect, don't broadcast. Me. So yeah, so um, there is this book that I really love. Um, I think it's called The Lean Startup. Have you have you heard about it? What's it called? Uh, Le the Lean Startup. The Lean Startup. Okay, so basically, the idea is that you start, you you throw an idea out there, you see whether it works, you keep it if you like it, then you go for the next one. It doesn't work, but you do it as fast as possible. Okay, and it's not, it doesn't have to be polished. So you just throw like a day book, for example. This is something I came up with, I'm gonna do it personally, I'm gonna to try to test it, but you can test it for yourselves. So there's a simple concept. You record, you have a song in your mind, all right? You record it as a demo, in a day. Everything, drums, vocals, shitty quality, it doesn't have to be perfect. But the song is there, right? And you have 200 people that are ready to listen to it. 200 people. Just work on that. If you don't have 200 people to listen to your music, then something is wrong. So you have those 200 people. You give them the demo, all right? It's something that is exclusive. If 90% love it, you keep it and you tell them, all right, guys, you love the whole thing? Can you pledge $5 so I can go to the studio and record it? And you get it this one. If you want to give some more, you get some exclusives. A little bit more, you get something extra. If they don't like it, the, nobody else would like it. These people wouldn't listen you, to your music. If they didn't like it, probably it's not a good song. You write another song the next day, right? Till you have a hit, something that is really good and they like it. If they're enthusiastic, they might support it, all right? So you have a song and you've recorded it for free. And then you try the same thing again. Maybe you can do the whole thing for a year. For me, I think it works perfectly. If you can do this, probably in a year you're gonna have 12 songs that are going to be really good. You will have developed your craft by writing new songs all the time and by testing ideas and really validating them with real people that will give you feedback. So here we go. If somebody wants to try this, let me know about I actually, results. I, I, I did it and it works very well because I'm, I'm giving a lot of com uh, content, so I'm keeping them engaged before I was keeping my things private and secret. 
it was not working out. I'm writing as much as possible, even yeah. uh, if it's not perfect, I put yeah. it online. And my friends go there and they yeah. every day. It's like photographers, you know, they just take pictures all the time and then they see that. This one has been liked a lot, so all right, let's see what people like and then maybe I can start selling stuff like that. It's all about testing for me. And social media is a great way to just put stuff out there and then see what works. Definitely. And, I, and I, think, I think some of you might be hearing that and going, oh yeah, and some of you go, what, you're joking? And I'd, 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 I'd encourage you to test it, to be honest. Don't, don't, don't close off to it. My, my, my experience is of writing with, um, and then, guys, what do you think? Um, sometimes has been, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes like, oh, what if you, and what if you, and you get to the end and you go, that's not my song. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really not what I was thinking at all. <laughs> so so it, it, it can be quite a painful process, but actually you grow in terms of what, what you're hearing in here and what, you, what you're then, then putting out. So it can, can be a really good, good process for you as a, as a person to know who to invite as well, maybe, who can help you as well. Sorry. Because at the end of the day, I think everybody can relate to that. What we create, we love it. Otherwise, we wouldn't create it. So we have the illusion that this song is amazing. <laughs> everybody thinks it's amazing. I like it, I wrote it. Yeah. But it's not always the case. So. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I've, I've, I've um, done tonight, I'm hoping I've done, is I've, I've laid a foundation. So, talked about the business models, talked about um, social media, but I haven't gone in, in depth into Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, whatever. And I thought it'd be only fair um, while I'm here, if, if you've got any questions about that, about any aspect of you know actual actual social media channels, current social media channels, um, I might not be able to answer them, but I might be able to have a good go at them in terms of what you're doing with them. We can either open it up or um, have a chat after co over coffee later. You know, more than happy to do that. This is where it goes quiet. <laughs> and what's your views on um, for the music industry for LinkedIn as a platform? Because obviously, you know, you've been around I, I, um, yeah, I, I agree totally. I think I think LinkedIn is sleeping. Um, it's not a sleeping giant because it's never, it's never been a giant. But um, LinkedIn, everybody, everyone come across LinkedIn. Link, LinkedIn is a corporate corporate um, face, Facebook. Um, in the early days, it was seen very much as you're looking for a job. Therefore, you update your LinkedIn profile. Um, what I've noticed is um, musicians have been getting on on LinkedIn um, because they can update what they're doing, what, what they've. Uh, been working on what they've recorded, the projects they're on as well, and connecting with the industry, which is even more important. So thinking, where, where do I want my music to go? Who do I want to push it out to? So if you're thinking, if your success, we're back to success again, is, is that uh, recording deal, um, actually link, LinkedIn might, might be for you in terms of working out who's, who's out there, who are the, you know, the, the big players in different, different um, uh, record companies, for, for example. Um, I, I, I suppose the only the connections in terms of musicians I'm, I've got on there are musicians I know, but I did get asked for a bizarre um, when I, I, I did a very low key festival um, from about 2003 to 2008, which was which was literally a, a a bandstand in the middle of a park and people played from it, and someone came to me and said, "Oh, I'm now on LinkedIn. Can you can you write me a recommendation as an artist and a songwriter?" And I said, "Yeah, I'd love to. I'd absolutely love to. I know your work." And had to then create a, a job role for myself, volunteer at the Stepping Stone Live Music Festival. Wow, you know, big, big stuff, folks. But actually, it really, really helped them in terms of what they want to do and what they want to do next. So, so yeah, to totally. Link LinkedIn, um, something to look at. Um, it wouldn't probably be the first choice of getting your music out there. But for connectivity in terms of the industry in particular, and potentially other musicians as well, um, one to look at. Google Plus, yeah, Google Plus. Um, I, I love Google Plus. I hardly ever use it. Um, Google, Google, Google Plus um, has some amazing functionality, and I think um, the, the, pro the problem has been with Google Plus. You know, it does everything other social networks do and, and more. Um, as a musician, you need to ask two questions: Are my audiences on there? And if not, B, why would they want to go there, and how do I get them there? 
what would be what would be the purpose. So some of the music success stories with Google Plus are you have um, a free hangout where you can invite um, you know ten people uh, via your account. Here's here's my int intimate gig. So you know you don't tour. Actually, I've given away my music. Um, some of you will be invited for a fiver, for a tenner, for fifteen pound, and I will be on my computer and I'll be playing to you. It will be an intimate gig, you know, that's that sort of um, thing. So it, it's thinking how 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 you use it. Um, what there's not a lot on. There's lots of stuff under the surface. So there are things like communities where you can invite people to communities and close communities to have conversations and share content and then go into hangouts together and stuff. So um, I'd, I'd, I'd say very much watch this space, but there are musicians using it, you know, looking at, okay, it has Hangouts, Hangouts are cool, full, full videos, um, let's, let's invite people to, the, to that and do, and that's, there has been, you know, sort of paid concerts via. Um, you can do that by Skype. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's completely free though, Google. So. Yeah. yeah, so just, just thinking about, about your business model and what, what your needs are. Um, the project we were involved with, Social B, um, was was getting a whole bunch of companies to go on to Google Plus and tell us what they thought of Google Plus, and uh, that was fascinating. We we thought no one would come, and every everyone came virtually. Uh, once once there was something in it for them, actually, here's a conversation that will help our business. Um, they all they all flocked on there, but you have to have a reason to go on there if you're not on there. I think um, generally, if you if you've got a YouTube account or you've got a Gmail account, you're on there by default. Um, but there you go. I just wanted to ask about Facebook ads um, because they kind of say you know you can go out and promote and you can yeah. get like have you have you ever tried it have you have you had a face, face, Facebook ads can be really effective so if, if you think about going um, to the point of who will be interested in your music um, so one of the things I've, I've done, stupidly enough, to always get ads, ads for other bands, is I've listed all the music influences in. It says, because you're interested in so-and-so, we might think, think you like so-and-so. And, -so. and what, what you can do is a whole bunch of things within the ads um, behind Facebook. So you can say, I am looking for this group of people, um, this sex, um, this age group, interested in this, interested in that. Um, so you, I, I, I couldn't work out for a while why I was getting um, things like um, Match.com and you know um, dating sites and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, what it's, what, what it's doing, it's looking at my data. I haven't put down I'm married anywhere. And it's saying, he's getting on a bit. He's probably looking for somebody by now, you know. So, so, so that's, that's the way the ads work. It's, it's not sort of, you know, exact science, but you can. I had this... Um, uh, one word listed, um, uh, what was it, music style? Uh, Ultravox. Um, used, used to be a big fan when I was very small, uh, Ultravox synth music. And it said, um, you're into Ultravox, you might be interested in this band. And uh, I clicked on them and I thought, they sound like a really poor version, a poor cover version of Ultravox. Why would I be interested in these guys at all? They obviously think they're great, but so take with a pinch of salt. I think the, the, the thing I'd say about Facebook ads is, um, have a look at what the, what the, the big guys are doing on Facebook. So they're um, connecting via their page, uh, in particular, with uh, a wide audience. They're putting great content on there for people to comment on. Um, they're, they're telling, not selling. And actually, they're getting more um, benefit from that. One of the... Um, F Facebook is, is, is notoriously difficult to crack, by the way. And say you have you know, 2 million um, fans on your Facebook page, or you have... Um, 200 fans on your Facebook page. Um, statistics have shown 2 million or 200, you're only going to ever get about 6% of those fans interacting with your page over a long period of time. So that's something to, to bear in mind. The, the, it's, a, it's a very difficult platform to, to get right. Um, content such as photos work superbly well. Um, people comment, people share. Ask people to share, share with their friends and push it out wider. Um, video works reasonably well. Um, people are a bit lazy on clicking on videos, to be honest. Um, having to sit down for even up to a minute, you know, within Facebook, or not see, see a nice cute cat and, hey, yeah, like that, you know. So, so photos, photos are really, really powerful within, within Facebook in particular. My, my advice, so it's a long way of saying my advice would be try the free stuff and then, then have a look at the ads if that's for you. You can have a look in the ads, go into the ads and have a look and see how to set one up anyway, free of charge without committing. 
So my question is that um, you said about six percent are the only ones who are really going to get. Yeah. yeah. So then, the page or profile? Very good question. Um, so, so on, on, your, on your profile, um, what you what you want to do is have as many friends as possible. Um, if you're going to use it for that, that um, specific purpose, Facebook rules, and um, this is I suppose this is where it gets into sort of a bit sort of um, is it isn't it? Um, is you can't have a personal profile as a business. Lots of businesses do because they they're not sure what to do. Um, the only difficulty. Um, with having a personal profile, um, suddenly I become um, Tyrone overnight, and I've got you know suddenly six thousand people are clamouring at my door and they find my first um, Facebook page. Um, I think there's a limit of five thousand friends or something like that. So so actually, um, Facebook are saying, "Well, this is this is ridicu ridiculous. You can't have more than this number. You must be abusing the system." So that's that's where the page would step in. For for me, the page as well is. And I know you guys, you know, you wouldn't want to go anywhere near this because because actually you're far too busy doing stuff and creating stuff and you know um, creating some amazing things as well. But actually, you know, for, for geeks like me, the metrics behind it you can only get from the pages. So the num number of clicks, the number of shares, where where your fan base is in the world, what content's working, what content isn't working. The new Facebook insights on behind the pages is is really really good. You start to get a flavour of. That content works. That content doesn't work. Um, and when you when your fans are online as well, it tells you when your fans are online as well, which is really important. There are tools as well within for sort of third party tools uh, for Twitter, so you can work out your best time to post um, to Twitter as well. Rather than oh, am I talking to myself? Yes, you are. Everyone else is asleep. <laughs> you know. Somebody? So basically, somebody told me that Facebook is a great platform to get something out and then send people outside Facebook to your own website or yeah. somewhere where you own the data. Yeah. So that was one thing. Um, second thing, there is an amazing article I found out two days ago. If you were here, like the second talk we had with Marcus Taylor, you remember? So he put together 97 tactics about social media content, <coughs> tools about like finding like the best time for posting, yeah. or some other tools where you're going to find it really useful. So I will try tonight when I get back home to send you all an email with this article. There's 97 of them, so you can find what really works for you. Yeah. One of there's the, so many tools. That's yeah, the thing. So well, many, and I think I think one of the, the, the key things um, in terms of your audience as well is work work out where they are, what platforms are they on. So, you know, if, if Facebook does a MySpace in the next two or three years, it probably won't. But if it, if it does and everyone migrates to Google+, Plus, actually, this, this, is, this is where we go. Because that's where the audience, it's pointless having the conversation here and there's no one listening. But then working out, um, so how am I using Twitter? Am I using Twitter for outreach? Because it's really good for that. It's really good for finding new people and bringing back to my Facebook page or, or engaging in conversations and bringing back to my web, website. Um, it's superb for that. It cuts out, um, in business, it cuts out the whole need for cold calling. You find out who people are. And you chat to them on, on, on Twitter and you can bring them back to your resources and that sort of stuff um, in particular. But working out, okay, where am I going to work out what works, where my audience is? Is it going to be based on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Pinterest, what? You know, where are they? Did you say that you, you would prefer to, that you should have a page rather than... A uh, like a Facebook account, I guess, but the page yeah. kind of belongs to that. Uh, yeah, it, it, it depends how you're going to use it. So you, you might, um, one of the best ways I think, think I've seen using it is, is here's, here's the page for the artist and here's their own Facebook page. And what they've decided is, is actually, even the Facebook page will point people towards the fan page. This will this, be my, my, this won't be my friends, this will be my trusted advisors almost, people I'm in the business with. Um, and actually, this this will be my sort of recruiting ground. Um, some of the other things that I've, I've seen a resurgence in as well is, is um, I was chatting earlier about Facebook groups. You know, Facebook groups were the, the early version of Facebook pages, um, real pain in the neck, but actually the functionality in there, you know, you can have a closed group. Tommy's idea, here's, here's my music, out to 200 people in, in, in the group. What, guys, what do you think? Let's get your feedback. 
those interactive dialogue. You could also do that in a community on Google Plus as well. So it's work, working out where you want to pull people to, where are they already? Um, will the walk to Google Plus be too much for them? Or actually, I'll just click on the group in Facebook and, and join that. Well, well, this is very important. So um, remember we talked like before that every social media ha has their own rules, right? So it feels kind of absurd if you're on uh, Google Plus and you start putting hashtags because it's, it's a Twitter thing, right? So there are rules for every social media. So the thing is that uh, people feel comfortable using Twitter for this reason and they feel comfortable using Google Plus for the other reason, like Google Hangouts. Or they feel comfortable using Facebook for the personal contact and sending, sending messages. So depending on what you need to do, you just find the, the right medium, right? And you, you interact with your audience for, for, for this reason. Like for me, for this project, let's say with the demos, I, I would do a Facebook group. I would not do a Twitter thing because everybody would be able to see. Yeah. But if I want to have like a live gig, let's say, just for 10 people, Google Hangouts. Skype doesn't really help this way. It could be a sort of another social media Skype. Or if you want to create like a brand about about your your, your music, you know, you're really into visuals, you go to Instagram, it's gonna be much easier than sharing, sharing stuff on Facebook yeah. where people can do this and that and that. Instagram yeah. just yeah. see the images. Yeah. So depending on, on what you want to do, you choose the right place. And yeah. That's exactly I think this is what sums up what yeah. you're saying today. Yeah. And I, th I, think, I think it's being aware of the, the, the trends in those rules as well. So hashtags now on Google Plus, um, big time. So Google, Google Plus um, featuring hashtags and other alternative hashtags that you can choose as well. Um, all sorts of um, wacky and cool stuff in the latest version of Google Plus that was released just before the summer. Um, hashtags also coming into Facebook, um, which you're probably aware of. One, one of the biggest changes on um, Facebook, so you go onto Twitter and you can search, you can see everyone's account, see what they're talking about. You can't, you can't really do that on, on Facebook at the moment um, unless you've got access to what they're calling open graph, which will give you that sort of, oh, actually, you can find out who's interested in music in this area I'm going to and maybe connect with them on Facebook. That hasn't been possible before. You, you have to know the names of people or look down a list of, of, of people. Um, that's, that's, that's coming. Uh, within Facebook very, very soon. It hasn't already to your account. It's gradually rolling out. So in general, I think we're just laying over time. Cool. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. So, yeah. So, uh, I would just like to say a couple of things. First of all, um, thanks a lot for that. Uh, I believe that this was a talk with the most, like, mostly packed with information. It was a lot of stuff. So I think that we need to go back to the video to, to check out what we've said yeah. today. For me personally, it was really helpful. Um, I would like to ask you something. Okay, now we're just talking about like, testing ideas. So there was something in mind. Um, so what we're doing now, it's really great into discussion. All right, you have it's back and forth. People can say their opinions. What we're talking about in theory, people getting inspired. Some people said that I would like to go into action. Right, so now we're talking about social media, but what about if I want to have a personalized social media strategy for myself? Really ready? You convinced me, or you said, now I want a social media strategy. Okay. Uh, the last time we talked about business model. So now somebody might want to have the wrong business model and see what works for them. So in my mind, so I'm, I'm always trying to find ways to make this place like a little bit better, right? So everybody can get more value. So I was thinking that we should start having workshops where people like Andre, for example, he's, a, he's an expert, he's teaching about business models. Where people that are interested will be part of a small group sitting on the table and Andre will start teaching about business models and everybody at the end of the day will have on paper the wrong business model of how to engage fans, how to have the value proposition, how to make money, revenue streams, how to calculate costs. Or, for example, now with Simon, you know a little bit of social media, but maybe it's the right time for developing your own personalized social media strategy. Right? We cannot cover everything today, yeah. obviously. So I was thinking, just, just raise your hands. Uh, who would be interested in having such a workshop where you actually get out of the room and you have something?
That's good enough. Uh, so I've done my experiment. I've seen it work. Nice. So <laughs> Excellent. Probably you're going to see something. Cool. You can tell he's smiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm smiling. I'm always trying to find like, something to, to make to make it a little bit better. So yeah. That's, that's good. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Personally, okay. some round of applause. Okay. Okay. I guess we can connect with you. I'd, I'd, I'd say, you know, if, if you go away and you think, oh, I wish I'd asked, and I, and I, I said he's come to me now, hey, don't, don't, don't be a stranger, you know who I am now. Um, you know where you <laughs> <laughs> On the net. You do, yeah. You know, please, please email me, tweet me, connect to me on LinkedIn, or, or give me a call. I've got some business cards as well if you want to take one. You know, please just pick the phone up or email me. Don't be a stranger. And thank you for your time. Thank you for your really great questions and insight as well. It's been good to, to know a bit about what you guys are doing and get some uh, uh, reflection on that as well. Thank you. Um, and if you want to say something, personally, I will be all day, all night, checking out if somebody says anything about this thing. I bet you will. <laughs> Use this thing, Facebook or, or Twitter. Um, well, before we go, uh, first of all, a sponsor. So, um, would you like to say a few things about what I'm keeping about? I think a few of you have been here before, but um, basically, I work for Lancaster University, who are partnering in London Fusion. So, what we do is we provide business support and assistance to creative and digital SMEs, which are small and medium enterprises. So, businesses, people who are working in the creative industries as a business. Which is why I work with Tommy a lot to try to help in the music industry start to think about themselves as a business and legally have that structure. And if you do have that, then Creative Fusion offers um, free support. Um, it's sponsored by Europe, so we've got um, money basically to help businesses in London. Everything from business model workshops that um, Tommy mentioned. Um, we do one to one support, we do things like Accounting workshops, um, social media. We also do opportunities for you to work with universities. Um, we'll give you a grant to go and work with the university to develop a project. We've got lots of things going on. So um, if anyone's interested in hearing more, you can go to the website, londonfusion.org.uk, or you can have a chat with me afterwards and I can um, see what we can do. But again, um, it is about thinking about yourself as a business. And if you don't have that structure, I can help you get there. But, um, just to recognise that this is the paradigm has changed as Simon has been saying, as Tommy has been saying. And if you're not thinking of yourself as a business, and other people aren't seeing you as a business, then you're really going to struggle to monetize what you're doing. And um, I take this gentleman's point on it because I worked in music back in the day where yeah, CDs, you can sell them just to make CDs and manufacture them. And that died around all the way to And it's what it's last year. So without trying to reinvent ourselves, um, we're really going to struggle to make a living in this industry. So if anyone wants any help or advice, I'll be here until the end of this, or you can contact me through that website. Thanks for coming, everyone. Another good turnout. Another um, great event, and thank you, Simon. It's okay. One, okay. one really quick last thing. So, again, I'm very open for any ideas. Just hit me on Facebook. I'm going to send you a link with, with, uh, with Simon, with my Facebook, London Fusion and everything. But if you have any creative idea, wherever it might be, right, I'm just open, I'm, I'm ready to, to listen, right? I, I like listening. So, yeah, so a few days ago, um, uh, sorry, for the okay, Cecilia. Uh, so, Cecilia and her partner, uh, they told me they're doing something very creative and I really liked it. So, if you would like to come and tell yeah. us what you're doing, really great. Okay, sorry. Uh, it's, um it's just that um, me and my friend Vicky, who she's a drummer and I'm a singer and songwriter, but I also am an amateur bass player slash guitarist slash keyboardist. Which I do, do gigs with. I do make money out of those instruments too, but even if it's not my focus. And I kind of felt that there's a lot of, I teach at the Institute in Kilburn, I've taught all over the world, and there's a, a certain level of gender inequality uh, in, in when we look at who plays what and who does what. And uh, I think that 
I love to see more males in and I love to see more girls play. So me and my friend, we started something called Girls with Groove. And it's a musical workshop for girls 13 to 16. Because we want to target them early just because I was told when I was younger that I was, you know, it was like, no, 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 you can sing, go and stand in the choir. And, you know, it's just for feeling that musical confidence when you step out into a musical um, environment. Even if you don't want to become a bass player, it's about going up to a jam session and, and the band says, okay, what key do you want to sing it in? You'll be, I want to sing it in B flat. And it starts on, you know, a C minor chord. Knowing these differences will make a massive change for, you know, for, for anyone. So we started this, we are going to host it at the Institute in Kilburn which is a very recognized institution in music. Jay, who's teaching at the institute, is the last speaker. Oh, right. Perfect. All right. So what, what's kind of our unique selling point is that we're both females and we know loads of other females that will join us if this kind of takes off. And, um, and we're providing them with all the instruments. We're providing them with the stage, with lighting. We're going to take them through from not necessarily knowing an instrument all the way through uh, have, having to produce a song and play it live and videos and you know for their own just to kind of create some some gender equality and, and just make girls feel okay about you know in an environment where you're not worried about whether you're you you know you're having the right hair clip or whatever they were about in that age but you know so that's what we're trying to do so anyone that has any type of connections to girls that age range or other educators or any connections to school so you think oh this is wicked I can send I can send you I can give you a flyer I can send you a PDF and anything, that'd be lovely any help that we can get just to kind of spread the word that'd be amazing. Next time we're gonna start having also a few musicians telling us your personal story, success, a lesson, something. So except for an expert, we have a person like us saying like, okay, I've done this and it works. Maybe you can try it. So, if you want to be here, like saying a couple of things about what you do, just let me know and uh, I'll see you next month. And we'll